To create your first form in Marketo, go to the Design Studio tab, select the Forms folder, right click and click New Form. Call the form My First Form and then add your name at the end. Unclick the Open in Editor and then click Create. Now that we've created this form, right click, select Edit Draft. You'll notice the form has been created with three default fields. We're going to modify this form to fit a more compact style. The first thing we're going to do is rearrange the fields. Email and first name are the most important fields, so they should come first. Without the email, you can't contact a person. And without the first name, you can't personalize an email. So those two should be first. What we're also going to do is modify this layout by removing the label. So if we click on this email address field, we scroll down, we're going to go to the label here and delete that. What you'll notice now is this label is gone. Then we're going to add hint text. So the same label we're going to add to hint text. And you'll notice now this grayed out hint is the name of the field. So this forms a more compact style of form. The other thing we're going to do is make this field mandatory. So to make it mandatory, we scroll down to is required and we tick the box. Once that occurs, you'll notice a small red asterisk next to the field. We're going to do the same for first name as well. So we'll move the label to the hint text, we'll make it required, and then for last name we're simply going to move the label but leave it option. And there we go, we have modified the default form. The next part is to modify this button label. You should never leave a button as submit. So without a more specific call to action, such as download this white paper, we're just going to put click here. And there we go, here's our first form. So let's click finish. Finish. We're going to click approve and close and now we're going to preview that form. So let's right click on that and preview it. This will give us an indication of what the form looks like on a landing page. And there we go. So let's close that tab. Now we're going to make some modifications to this form. Now let's edit the form we created. To edit it, we simply right click and select edit draft. Let's add an extra field. To add an extra field, we simply click the add new field button. Now if you don't know the name of the Marketo field, you can simply scroll through and select the most relevant. But in this case, I know the name. So I'm going to start typing it and it will suggest the job title field. So I'm going to also change the label and add that to the hint text and there we go I've added a new field let's say I wanted to limit the job title to a certain range so for example creating a drop down in order to do that we need to change the field type so right now it's set to text we need to set it to select you'll notice the style of the box has now changed to be a drop down but of course we need to add some values. So you'll notice the hint text is now gone and it's been replaced with the default setting which is select. So let's edit the values here. So the first one we're going to change is this and what we might do is select job function as the hint. Stored value is uh, not changed and we might add for example marketing manager as an option. We might also add marketing operations and then we might add a generic other. Now the stored value is only used when you need to submit something different to Marketo. So what I mean by that is if the label in the drop down was different to the value we want to send to Marketo, then we would store it differently. So for example, let's say we wanted to store marketing executive when someone selected marketing manager. So that's what's actually stored in Marketo versus the label which is more user friendly called marketing manager. So that's what stored valued is for. Now we click a safe. So you'll notice that now the labels change to select job function and then if we want to view the values we can simply click edit here and have a look at those. You'll notice that it's auto populated the stored values uh, when I haven't actually set one so you don't need to manually set that. Then let's click save. Now the other thing I'm going to do is change the style of this form. So if we click next instead of finish or we can click on form settings here we can select a different style of form. So this is set using CSS. You can also specify your own. So if I want to flip through the different form themes, I simply click this button. Now if you had a darker landing page, for example, you might select a reverse colored one. I'll select the inset theme here and then I'm going to click next. The other thing I can change is some of the form settings, such as, for example, the font family that I use for the labels and hints, the font size, also some other options around locale, language, and 
I'll go into progressive profiling in advanced forms. The thank you page section is the page that the visitor will see after filling in the form and clicking in the button. So in this particular case, we're just going to leave it on the default stay on page. And then we click next and we click approve and close. So now we'll preview this form. Right click, preview, and let's try entering some data in that particular form. So you'll notice the hint text is first displayed here. So let's add an email, my first name, Name. Let's skip the last name because that's optional and let's select a job function of marketing manager. Then we click here and nothing will happen but it does give you an idea of how the form works. To give you an idea of the error handling, let's say we remove the first name here and let's refresh this preview so we get a new fresh form. And for example, let's miss one of the mandatory fields. So we'll add an email, we'll skip the first name and we'll put a last name and then we'll click simply click here. So you'll notice now the error box has popped up. So this is a good way to preview how your form actually works. If you want to delete a field in your form, you simply right click, edit the draft, select the field you wish to delete and click the delete button. Once you've done that, you'll need to click finish and approve and close. You'll notice a little tick box when I approve it, that means it's now live and active. If I want to confirm that, I can click preview and I'll see now that the last name field is gone.